Hello everyone, in this video, I will go over my solution to the problem named Takahashi Tor taken from Adcoder Beginner Contest 213, which is today's Adcoder Contest. So, by solving this problem, you'll learn what an Euler Tor of a tree is, and I'll explain the Euler Tor of a tree concept both on paper or conceptually and both in code. So before I show you the code, I'll explain why this problem is just asking you to print the Euler tour of the tree. So first, let's understand what the Euler tour traversal of a tree is. And then I'll explain the problem statement and why this problem is just giving another way of what an Euler tour is. So an Euler tour of a tree is just Let's say we start, let's consider this tree with four nodes and let's say we are rooting it at one. So that's why we start the DFS from one. So when we start the depth first search from one to visit all the nodes, what we'll do is we'll go to the smallest node two, then uh, we'll go to the node four, then we'll come back to two, then we'll come back to one, we'll go to three, and then we'll come back to one. This is the how the DFS of a tree will work. And what we'll maintain in our Euler tour is we'll maintain the set of nodes which we are processing. So what this means is that when we start at node one, we'll add node one to our list of nodes. Then we go to node two, we add node two to the list of nodes. We go to node four, we add node four to the list of nodes. When we come back to node two, what actually happens is that we'll still add two to our list of nodes because um, because we are coming back to two essentially. So this is a tricky part in Euler tour. Then from two, when we go to one, we'll again add one to our list. And when we go from one to three, we add three to our list. And when we come back to one from three, we add one to our list. And this is called the Euler tour traversal of a tree. So this is basically what we are going to compute. Now let's take another example and let's more formally describe the Euler tour traversal. So let's take the example of NS5 and we have a tree like this. So what the formal definition of an Euler tour traversal would be, uh, we add the current node u to the list. So we initially add one to the list. Then for each child vi, we call DFS of vi. So we call DFS on two which basically will add two to the list. However, before we go to the next child, we need to add u again to the list. So that's why we'll add one again to the list. Then we call DFS on three, we add one to the list. We call DFS on four, we add one to the list. We call DFS on five, which adds five to the list, and then we add one to the list. And in this way, we compute the Euler tour traversal of a tree. Now, if you look at the problem statement, then what you'll see is that the answers for the first two sample test cases are the same as the two Euler tour traversals which are written down. And now I will come to the point and tell you why the Euler tour of the tree is actually what the problem is asking us. So let's understand the problem statement first. The problem is telling us to start from city one and then for each adjacent city, which is not visited, we'll go to them in uh, from the smallest order to the largest number. And what we'll do is we will add the current city to the list of all cities because we need to find the sequence of cities which uh, we visit. So that's why we'll add the city to the list of all cities. and if there, if there are no adjacent cities, then we go back to the parent from which we came or we stop the journey at node one. So if you look at this problem statement in a recursive manner, because like right now, this problem statement does not make much sense and it didn't make much sense to me in the contest also. But if you think of it recursively, then what happens is that what they're asking you to do is 
they are asking you to traverse the tree like that's the first thing which you should realize they are asking you to traverse the tree and secondly uh, so that can be done using a dfs so they are asking you to call dfs on one because we terminate when we are at the city one so that's why they're calling they're asking you to call dfs on one and what they are actually giving you as the definition of dfs of u is for each for each v adjacent to u you call dfs on v that's normal and then what they're saying is that we come back to the parent so that's why if we visualize it from the point of view of the child v so if we have u and some child v then what actually happens is that you come back to v you come back to u from v and that's why you basically add v you add u to the sequence of cities which you're visiting both in the beginning of the dfs and in the end of the dfs and if you think about it carefully for a minute or two you'll realize that this is the exact same definition of the euler tour which i had written and that's why the question which they're asking us is just print the euler tour of the array and the only thing is that we need to go to the adjacent cities in increasing order of their numbers so that's all that is the additional thing which we need to do and now i'll show you how we implement this in code so in the code i have an array ett which stores the euler tour traversal i have n to be the maximum possible value of 210 to the 5 and i have an adjacency list of size n then i take in the value of n and i read in the graph and for each i from 1 to n i sort the adjacency list of the ith node because they tell us that we print we always go to the smallest city among the set of unvisited cities that's why i'll sort the adjacency list to make it simpler then i call dfs on one with no parent so in the dfs function i have parameters u and p the current node and the parent of the current node i add u to the euler to traversal for each adjacency uh, for each node u adjacent to for each node v adjacent to u if v is not the parent or basically v is not visited we call dfs on v with u as the parent and we add u to the adjacency or to the euler to traversal as mentioned in the whiteboard then after i complete the dfs function after i call it with node 1 with no parent i print the elements in the euler to traversal because as i just mentioned that's our answer and let's just submit this code to see that it gets accepted so as you could see my code got accepted so as you saw in this problem we learned what an euler tour traversal of a tree is conceptually and in code in code we implemented it using the depth first search method which i showed you how we can modify to find the euler tour of a tree then i showed you how the problem which they were asking us is just a convoluted way to tell us to print the euler tour traversal of the tree so if you like this problem and my solution to this problem don't forget to give this video a thumbs up also do consider subscribing to my channel for more such content thank you